Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome back to another podcast with your host, Jimmy Bayoso. It's been quite a few weeks that we haven't uploaded on YouTube and as well on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but we're back. Um, it's a brand new year. Um, actually, I'm re recording on the actual day of my birthday today, November 6th. This video should be up tomorrow, November 7th. So um, just really grateful for everything God is doing. It's a brand new year. And actually, I woke up and I was like, I, I want to I want to go and want to go to the studio today and I want to record because, you know, it's just what I love to do. Uh, I love to just be able to spread the message of Jesus, uh, share hope and love to people and guide people through my experience and the things that I'm learning and through what God has been speaking to me to guide people on how to walk closer to Jesus. Because I think that the most important thing in life is to be able to walk with Jesus. And growing up in church my whole life, I felt like people made following Jesus very complicated and made following God and becoming a follower of Jesus and a Christian, they made it so complicated and would give me just a set of rules on how to follow Jesus when, as I then started actually going through scripture on my own and reading the word of God, I started finding out the lifestyle of Jesus and started just falling more in love with him that I realized that following Jesus is not complicated. God just wants an obedient heart. That's why the Bible says that he... He prefers, he he chooses, he wants uh, obedience over sacrifice. It's not what you can give up for God, but it's what you can obey God in. You know, because every every time we're always looking at, oh, what can I sacrifice? What can I sacrifice? And don't get me wrong. You know, sacrifice is great. Giving up things are, are needed. It's it's We must do those things. But God prefers you to obey him in the little things in which he already told you to do that you've been ignoring and pushing to the side. And you've been thinking that you need to sacrifice all these bigger things when first start obeying him in the little things in which he already gave you conviction and spoke to you about. So on, the, on this podcast, on this episode, I just want to touch on three tips three quick ways on how to follow Jesus. There could be many more and whatnot, and I know there's probably a bunch more, but these are just three quick that I think will lay the foundation to your Christian walk, to your walk with Jesus. Maybe you're watching, you're listening to me right now, and you're been, you've been wanting to get closer to God, but you don't know how. Or maybe you're already walking with God, but you just want God in a deeper way. And, and I definitely think that's one of the best things just like me like i'm walking with the lord but i want to walk with him even more i want to stay walking with him because the bible says that deep calls on to deep and that's one of my favorite scriptures because it, it's a reality that's been happening in my life especially recently it's just deep has been calling on to deep just i want more of god in my life and i don't care how that looks like but i want it you know because i know if i have him i have everything and he is everything that's why in the book of John says that apart from God, we can do absolutely nothing. And a lot of people, they're trying to achieve and trying to do so many things and not realizing that the Bible already says that without him, you can do nothing. And maybe you're able to achieve certain things. Maybe you're able to get to certain places. But I guarantee you that a lot of the people and a lot, a lot of people who achieve things and get to places and get to financial freedom and get to their goals. And if you do it without God, Two things may happen. It won't be sustainable or you'll be empty living in those things. You'll get to the point of pleasure. You'll get to the point of success. You'll get to the point of where you want to be, the relationships you want to be, and you'll have them. And yet you'll still realize that you're empty inside. And that's because there's a specific place in your heart that only Jesus was meant to fill. That's why the Bible says that God placed eternity in our hearts. So we must draw closer to the lord the bible says that uh the psalmist said draw me and i'll run closer to you and i believe god is drawing us in this moment if you clicked on this video if you're listening to this podcast it's because god is drawing you it's not because you wanted to click on it it's because god already knew and placed it in front of your eyes for you to go and click on it maybe you saw it through an instagram story a message or it just showed up on your youtube channel a friend sent it to you or maybe you're subscribed and you got the notification but that's god's way of drawing you god does nothing by accident he does everything in purpose for purpose and by purpose so um number one one step 
to be able to walk with Jesus that has just blessed my life and I've been practicing and it's something that I do daily. And number one, it's worship. I think worship is is so important. I think worship is so crucial. Worship is so powerful. And worship is, and that's the thing is that people get worship mixed up. We think worship is praying about our needs and praying about the things that we want and are asking for God. Worship has nothing to do with you, but has everything to do with him. Worship is about looking at him and keeping your eyes focused and glazed upon him. That's why I love the worship song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Because that's what real worship is. It's when you take your eyes off yourself and completely just focus in. Focus your eyes on him and you turn your full attention, you turn your full heart, you turn your full emotions, your full thoughts, your full mind, your 100% of yourself towards him. And that's why I've mentioned this in previous podcasts where I'm just very careful about listening to certain worship music. And I'm not saying that every worship music is bad and and whatnot, no, but I want to listen to worship music and I want to worship to worship music that exalts him and not my problem. You know, there's a moments to pray for our situations. There are moments to pray for our problems. There's moments to grieve about our problems. But then there's moments that the Lord tells us that, you know, that we got to just worship him out of our heart. Not for what he can do for us, but for who he is. Not for what he can bless me with, but for what he is and how good he is. That even if you may be struggling right now, even though you may be going through the valley of shadow and death and evil, God is telling you, you know, don't worry. Don't fear, worship me in the midst of the battle. Worship me in the midst of the wilderness because he will make a way. And that's the beauty of worship. And I found myself many times in my room as I'm worshiping, many times in the shower, many times in the car, where I'm just worshiping and suddenly I hear the voice of God. Suddenly I hear that that voice inside of me. Suddenly the Lord shows me a vision. And this is all Bible because we can look at actually in the book of Acts, chapter 13 verse 2 and throughout all these three tips that i'm going to give her these three ways and we can follow the lord i'm definitely always going to bring the bible to it because you know i think every message and everything we say has to be according to the word of god we can't be out here just making up stuff every foundation and everything and every message we bring should be according to god's word so if you're listening to certain people and they're not bringing no bible to you you know, we got to watch out. We got to test everything and make sure that everything is according to God's word. And in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, it says this. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, you see where it says, as they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. You see, that that is so crucial right there. It says, as they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit spoke in that moment. And this is why, this is what happens many times in my personal life. There's people where like, I want to hear the voice of God in my private life. I want to hear the voice of God when I pray. And the thing is that a lot of times we're just praying so much for our needs and so much. God bless me. God do this for me. God do that for me. You're not giving time for the Holy Spirit to actually speak to you. But as you worship the Lord and you magnify him, it gets to a point where you just become so still. It it gets to a moment where you worship him until he comes. And as he's entering your room and his presence is filling your heart, your spirit, your life, your mind, your room in that moment, your car. In that moment, he becomes so much more present to you than your own body that in those moments is is in which he speaks. And there's moments that I've been worshiping for 30 minutes And I'm just like, God, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not feeling anything. And then I start realizing that I'm in this walk with the Lord, not by what I feel, but by what I know. I don't need to feel him to know he's with me. I don't need to see him or hear him to know he's with me. I know because faith is not by sight. You know, faith is just knowing And in those moments, I just continue just worshiping and worshiping and worshiping because I know that as I'm worshiping him, I'm building a cloud of glory for his presence to descend. I know that my worship is reaching to him. And I've always said this is that when when we worship God, 
He inhales our, our worship and he exhales his glory over our lives. And it's like the more you worship the Lord, the more the presence and the glory of God is being poured out on your life. So I encourage everyone that is watching, listening to me right now, start taking time, start taking specific time throughout your day privately. I'm a, I'm a big believer in what the Bible says when Jesus says, go into your room, close the door and lock yourself up in your room and seek your and seek your father who is in private. And if you seek him in private, he will reward you openly. And that's one of the things that I'm a big believer on. I, I get it. You know, we could pray in our car. We could pray in our shower. We could pray, you know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. We could pray as our days go on. But when you close yourself up in your room, you're giving priority to God. Because, you know, as you're driving to work or you're driving somewhere and that's your time of prayer, you're still distracted because your eyes have to be on the road, you know, or if you're on the train or if you're showering, you're your focus is also on something else, right? But when you decide to actually just go into your room and close yourself up, you're, say, you're saying to the Lord, God, I'm serious right now. God, I, I'm really serious about seeking you right now. I really have dedicated this time just for you. I've made an appointment. I've made a date with you today in this day, in this moment, and I've made you a priority. See, because just taking time alone out of your day to actually go into your room, close yourself up, that secret place, it could be your bathroom, it could be a closet, it could be wherever you have find a secret place where you just are 100% alone with God privately. That moment you're giving God priority in your life and you're saying to him, I need you, I want you, and this is the moment in which I want to meet with you and become one with you and worship you. So you want to hear the voice of God? I encourage you. You want to experience the presence of God more. You want to, my greatest encounters with the Lord have been in moments of worship, have been moments where I'm just worshiping the Lord and just loving on him and him loving back on me. And this is why I always tell people God is so real. And this is why I don't, I can't stop preaching Jesus. I'll never stop preaching Jesus and I'll never stop telling people about Jesus. It's because I've encountered him in such a way and I continue to encounter him and I will continue to encounter him because he is real you know he is not dead but he is alive Jesus is not like these other gods who were once here and then died and they just left something written about him or people just then decided to believe on other things no Jesus is the only true God who died for us See, like, he took on your pain, your infirmity, your sins, your shame, everything. But not only did he take it up and died, but on the third day, he also rose from the dead, and he is still alive today. That's what the Bible says. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And there is no other God in this world, no other, no other belief in this world like Jesus Christ. He is the one and only true God. He is the Son of God, and Jesus is God. And I really want you to just, by knowing that now when you go to worship, know that you're worshiping the true and living God. Number two, it's reading your Bible. See, it's getting into the word of God. And this is so crucial because a lot of people are always being deceived by so many people, by so many things. And it's because you're not in your Bible. You don't want to be deceived the Bible says that in the last days, deceptions will arise. One of the big crucial things that in these last times in which we're living in is the deception is going to lift up like never before. You're going to see preachers. You're going to see people. You're going to hear other things rising up in the news and, and social media that are going to try and deceive you and fill you with a doctrine and fill you with things that are, were never written in the Bible or taken by Bible verses out of context, and this is why you need to stay on the Bible. This is why you need to read the word of God so like that nobody moves you, so like that nobody takes you out of your faith, so like that nobody could come and lie to you and give you a Bible verse and they manipulate it for their own benefit. No, you need to know the word of God for yourself. And by this, I'm not saying that, you know, you're just going to read your Bible and not listen to anybody else. No, we need to be instructed by people. God has placed mentors, coaches, teachers, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors to edify us, to build up the body of Christ. But you also need the word of God for yourself. See, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, even the devil himself tempted and gave scriptures to Jesus, but he gave 
him scriptures that were taken out of context. And you need to be very careful with that. And this is why how you walk with the Lord, number two, is by being in his word. See, you, you can know the Lord through worship, but you also need to know the Lord through his word. See, like you need to know the ways and the minds of God. And you know, and, and you know the mind of God through his through his scripture, through his word. And then you just and you just know the presence and the love of God and his goodness and faithfulness. It's through worship. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms 119, verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. And it says this. Let me just pull it up real quick. I decided not to write them down on my phone or anything because I just want to be able to just read them with you as you're watching me. And it says in Psalms 119, verse 105, it says this. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. You want, you want guidance in your life? You want guidance in everything you do? You want guidance in this walk with God? You want guidance in your family and your work and everything? The Bible says your word is a lamp to guide my feet. See, this Bible is our guide. The same way when you're building something at home or you're building a closet, you buy something from Ikea, Walmart, wherever, wherever it is or whatever it is, and you're trying to build something, what is the number one thing you always go to look for? It's the manual. So the manual will teach you how to build what you're trying to build. So the Bible is the same way for our life. It is our guide. It is our manual to build our life up. It is our manual to teach us where to go, what to do, what to say. You know, it's our lamp to our feet and it's our guide to our walk. So the reason why many people feel that they have no guidance that they're not walking in the way they need to walk in and don't know what to do in life, the number one thing that I'm pretty sure you're not doing is reading your Bible. And by reading your Bible, I don't mean that you're reading scriptures off somebody else's Instagram account or that you have just a Bible verse on your Instagram bio or in Twitter or in TikTok or whatever it is. No, I mean reading the Bible for yourself where you're taking your own personal time as you wake up at lunch, at dinner, throughout your day, where you're actually taking time set apart to actually read the Bible for yourself and really study it and put it into practice and make it become part of your life. That's actually reading the word of God. And reading the word of God is not also just going to Sunday and listening to a message and the only Bible you're reading is the one that the pastor or the leader is giving you. No, it's taking time throughout your Monday to Saturday as well and getting the Bible into your life as well. And when you start doing that, let me tell you, you are going to be guided in life. God is going to speak to you and your life will flourish like never before. And check this out what it also says. It says, and it's a light for my path. If you feel like you're walking in darkness, if you feel like you're walking in an anxiety and in depression, the Bible says that he, his word is a light for your path. So if you're going through the wilderness, if you're going through a, a valley that you feel like it's just complete darkness and you don't know what to do, you don't know where you're going, you feel hopeless, the word of God says that his word is a light to your path. I recommend you start reading the book of Psalms. Start re reading the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start reading the epistles. Start reading Proverbs. You start getting into the word of God and watch how your life completely changes and watch how you start feeling and getting closer to God. And this is the last one, number three. It's going to church. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And I think this is so big because a lot of people think that just, you know, I, I, I get it. I love the whole online community and I love, you know, catching service on a Sunday through through YouTube and whatnot. But let me tell you, there's nothing like going to the house of God. There's nothing like going and being around people people of faith and building a community with believers. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says this, dear friends. Oh, I'm sorry. It says this. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. See, the Bible telling us here is to not neglect our gathering. Don't stop going to church. And if you're watching and listening to me right now and you've been church hurt, that should not be your excuse 
for that in which now you're using to stop going to church. You know, and I get it. I went through church hurt. I experienced church hurt, really bad church hurt to the point that I didn't want to know anything about God anymore. But you know what? The Bible says do not neglect our gathering. So it doesn't matter if we go to we go through church hurt. We got to learn to heal from that and go and find another place. Find a place, a home in which they're teaching sound doctrine, where they're worshiping the Lord and in which you have a community of believers because the benefit of of going to church is that you have a community. That's why it says here that don't let us neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. See, you can't really encourage one another through watching a YouTube video or or, uh, connecting Sunday through a message online. You know, you need people who who come and help you. That's why the book of Proverbs says iron sharpens iron. You know, you need people in your life of community of people who will keep you unchecked who will encourage you, who will help you grow. People who you could then meet up throughout in the week and have Bible studies or call each other and pray. You know, don't neglect that. Especially the Bible says as the times are drawing near, as the Lord is coming near, this is the reason and the more we need to go to church and the more we need to be at church and go Sundays and and find yourself and connect yourself, plug yourself into a church. And, and and God is this is a word for somebody. Just because, you know, watch as as you miss church, as you start missing church, as you start missing one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months. Watch how your spiritual life starts going down a little bit. Watch how your love for the God starts becoming cold. Watch as how things that used to not bother you anymore or temptations that you overcame. Now suddenly you feel like you can't overcome them anymore. Watch how suddenly you start listening back to that same secular stuff you used to listen to, that music you used to listen to, the the things you used to watch before, the people you used to surround yourself before, the things that once you put away start coming back into your life. Why? Because going to church keeps that fire in your life active. It keeps it burning even more. See, you need to add more oil. You need to add more gas into that fire, and you do it by worshiping God, by reading the Bible, and by going to church. You need a community. You need a believer. And if you got to travel 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half away to go to church, do it. If before we used to travel so much to go clubbing, partying, and doing all these other things, and we used to just drive anywhere and everywhere, why not now pay pay a price and go to church? And you're investing into your spiritual life which means more than anything else in this world. So I encourage you, if you stay to the end of this video, I encourage you, start worshiping God daily. Start reading your word daily and start going to, the, to, and start going to church weekly. And watch as how you start getting closer to God. Watch as you start maturing in your walk with Jesus. And watch how sin starts dying out from your life. Because the more you have of him in your life, the more you have of God in your life, the less you have of the world in your life. People always tell me, Jimmy, how do I overcome sin? How can I stop being tempted by so many things? And let me tell you, you're always going to be tempted. And temptation does not mean you fell in sin. Jesus was a perfect man. He was tempted, but he didn't fall into sin. It's what you do with the temptation. But if you want sin to start dying away from your life, fill yourself up more with God and watch how all those things that were in your life and the world and the wickedness that is in your life starts fleeing away. That's why John the Baptist said, I must increase. I must decrease for God to increase in my life. You want sin. You want your ego. You want pride. You want this world to decrease in your life. Increase more of God in your life. Increase your prayer time. Increase your church time. Increase your community time with believers, with people who walk with Jesus. And increase your time in the word of God. And watch how your life changes. And watch how your surroundings and things that were used to be temptations are no longer temptations for your life. I hope this blessed somebody. Write down in the comment section how this blessed you if you received. Tell me where you're watching us from. Tell me if you need prayer. Share this video with somebody. I hope it's a blessing to people who are starting this walk with Jesus and as well as a reminder to those who are like walking now with God but want to get deeper with God. Get deeper in his word. 
Get deeper in worship and get deeper in church. Involve yourself more. Start serving. Start doing things. Start putting into practice what you're receiving in your private time with God and start giving it to people. Start using social media to encourage and love people and praying for people. All right? I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on the bell notification on YouTube so you can be notified every time we post. We're back at weekly posting again. So I encourage you, hold on to your faith. Don't let nothing or no one move you. Also, if you guys want to give on to the Lord, you want to give to this ministry, you want to give to what we're doing this month of October. We reached over 3.3 million people through social media. So your seed, what you're doing is going to all this. It's going to be on the description in the comments below, the ways you can give through Venmo, Cash App. And I love you guys. Thank you so much. I bless you guys. And I pray that you guys will have the one of the most blessed weeks ever. And even if you're watching me right now, give your life to Jesus. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, you're my Lord and my Savior. I repent of my sins. Jesus, help me know you in a true and a personal way. And start walking with Jesus. I hope these three tips helped you. These are just three practical tips and how to follow Jesus. I love you guys. Until the next one.